In this video, we're going to take a look at partial derivatives. So let's start off by imagining that we've got a multivariable function f of x, y. And we're first going to talk about some notation for partial derivatives. So we're going to write delta f by delta x. So notice this kind of script d here is a lowercase delta. So delta f by delta x, um, that represents the partial derivative of our function f with respect to the variable x. And the calculation for delta f by delta x is going to be to take the derivative of the function f with respect to the variable x and treat y as a constant. And in general, if you had a multivariable function that depended on several variables, let's say three or more variables, um, when you take your partial derivative, you just take the derivative with respect to one variable at a time and you treat all the other variables as constants while you're doing that calculation. So let's try an example. So let's say our function f is sine of x squared plus y squared minus 3e to the xy. So we're going to practice taking the partial derivatives. We're going to take delta f by delta x where we take the derivative with respect to x, and we're also going to try delta f by delta y. So we'll practice both of those. Okay. In fact, for this particular function, I think delta f by delta y might be slightly easier, so we're going to do that one first. All right, so for this bottom one, um, y is going to be our variable. We're going to treat x as a constant throughout this calculation. So let's first take the derivative of the sine function. So derivative of the outside function is cos, so we go cos of x squared plus y squared, and then need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So derivative of a constant plus y squared would be 2y when we're taking the partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, then let's move over to the exponential. Um, that coefficient of minus 3 just stays in front. Derivative of the exponential function is the exponential function itself times the derivative of the exponent. Um, so the derivative of x, y, when we're taking the derivative with respect to y, is x. Just imagine if you had something like 4y in the exponent, you'd say the derivative of the exponent is 4. If you had 7y, you'd say the derivative is 7. If you have x, y in the exponent and um, x is a constant, then your derivative is x. So there's our partial derivative with respect to y. y was the variable, x was a constant. So let's try this the other way around then. We're going to try delta f by delta x this time. So again, derivative of the sine function is cos. So we get cos of x squared plus y squared. Then for the derivative of the inside function, we've got x squared plus a constant. So that derivative is going to be 2x. And then let's move over to the exponential. So our coefficient, minus 3. Taking the derivative of the exponential, you get the exponential itself times the derivative of whatever is in the exponent. So the trick here is to think of this exponent as some number times x. Remember, y is just a number for the sake of this calculation. So you've got some number times x, and when you take the derivative of that with respect to x, you get that number, y. So there we have our two partial derivatives of that multivariable function. So now let's talk about geometry and let's understand the geometric meaning of partial derivatives. Let's talk about the meaning of the partial derivative delta f by delta x. So I'm going to draw the axes here so we can visualize what's happening in three-dimensional space. Um, imagine that we take the surface z equal f of x, y for whatever function we might be interested in. Let's say our surface looks a little something like that, just for the sake of drawing a picture. Um, and when we take the partial derivative with respect to x, we are insisting that y is a constant. So let's say here, this is y equal b. It doesn't really matter what the b value is, it's just a fancy way of saying y is constant here. And if we think geometrically about what y equal b represents, it's a plane. So y equal b is a plane that actually travels parallel to the xz plane. Okay, so let's try to draw that plane. We're going like that, and we're gonna we're really interested here in how this plane, how this plane is gonna intersect 
our surface. So let's say that's our plane there. Okay, so when that plane intersects our surface, what we're going to produce is a curve. Just imagine that curve traveling along the surface, capturing all the points on the surface where y is equal to b. So let's zoom in on that curve. So this curve is moving in the x and z directions. It's moving forwards and backwards as the x value changes, and it's moving up and down as the z value changes. Okay, so if we identify any point on this curve, let's say this point right here, and we were to draw the tangent line to the curve, then we could talk about the slope of the tangent line um, to that curve at that point, and the name that we would give to that slope, delta f by delta x. So the slope of the tangent line will change as we choose different x values um, and draw different tangent lines to that curve. So if our x value were this one, for example, tangent line would look like that. We'd have a slightly different slope. If we were over here, um, we'd have a vastly different slope for that tangent line. So delta f by delta x represents the rate of change of our function f with respect to the variable x. And in order to calculate that, we hold y constant. So you could draw a similar kind of picture where you hold x constant, and that would give you the geometric understanding of delta f by delta y. So let's finish up this video with a little bit of notation. Um, when we talk about a multivariable function, there are two really common ways to describe that. Sometimes it's just called z. Other times it's called f or f of x, y. So z, f, or f of x, y, all different ways of saying the same thing. Now when we talk about notation for partial derivatives, there are then a few different ways to write down that partial derivative. So the notation that we introduced at the beginning, something like delta f by delta x, if we're calling our function f, um, but if we were calling our function z, you could equally well write delta z by delta x. Now another notation that's really quick um, and most of the time works a bit better is just to use subscript notation. So you could write f subscript x. That means exactly the same thing, still the partial derivative of f with respect to x. You could equally well write z sub x. Um, and then one other notation that you may see, I would say it's slightly less common, is to have a capital D which represents the differentiation operator, um, and then just write a subscript to indicate what uh, variable you're taking the partial with respect to, and then in the brackets you would have a description of whatever your multivariable function is. So this last notation here probably useful if you had an extremely complicated function and you just wanted to bracket it off to be clear. So those are the various notations that we'll see. Um, most commonly we'll be sticking to the first four and we'll see that um, different notations are useful in different contexts. Thanks for watching.